Namaskar everyone and happy new year. This is the first live of the year. Um, and I'm very excited because we're going to be talking about, I say that every time, but I'm actually really excited because we'll be talking about a topic that I'm personally super invested in, which is cultural dance. So for a lot of people, I think when you think about cultural dance, it's kind of hard because if you don't know anything about cultural dance or classical dance or folk dance, then you're likely to be disassociated from it because you don't know enough technically to understand it. But we're actually gonna go through cultural dance and folk dance and all these things um, over the course of the month with different professionals in the field. Oh, here we go, yeah, she's here. All right. Hey! New place, who this? Who this? New year, new you. <laughs> new year, new me, new location. How's my lighting? We good? We good? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. All right. I can't really tell the difference in the background because it's so close, but I'm ex oh, all right. I see a dresser back there. Hello from Houston, right? Hi from Houston. What? I relocated to the Midwest. I never thought I would do this, but I did. Oh my gosh. <laughs> never thought I would leave the east, just but I finally moved closer there. to uh, the west coast, and I feel like at some point you might just end up over here with me, which would which would make my life amazing and better. So yes, I would get my grammar correct on flyers. Exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to Daisy Talk, everyone. I'm your host, the managing editor of India Current, Sushi Prabha, and with me I have. Hi everyone, it's Happy Yashu, Confidence and Lifestyle Coach, and of course, one of your amazing co-hosts for Desi Talk, where we are bringing real Desi conversations for you all. We want you all to participate. This is 2022. Happy New Year to you, Srishti, to India Currents, and to all of our viewers. We want this to be uh, opportunity for you guys to engage and tell us about your experiences being Daisy or or not even being Daisy but wanting to learn about Daisy culture. Yeah. Well, I'm actually interested if there's people tapping in that aren't uh, Daisy. I want to know about your cultural dance and your folk dance, which is really the uh, theme for today. So. I started off talking about how this is something so personally relevant to both of us because we're both dancers and we both still dance, I believe. I still dance pretty regularly. I do Kathak. Yashu, you do? Kuchipudi. I'm a professionally trained Kuchipudi dancer. Don't do it as much as Trishti does, but hey, listen, here and there, I'll dance in my apartment now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's is everyone's got, you're doing your hustle is real. You're doing so much that <laughs> I feel you. But yeah, like dedicating time to Kathak is like a full time job that I do on the side at this point with my work. So what I started with was the reason I think this topic is so important is because when you don't really know anything about cultural and folk dance, especially ethnic dances, you're really likely to not understand it, comprehend it, or seek it. And that's kind of why we're doing this, so that you kind of get an understanding of what that is. So today we're just going to do like brief introductions of things that we know. And then over the course of the month, and hopefully maybe two months, we'll talk about the different specific styles of dance and hear from actual professionals in the field, teachers, people who are like really invested in the arts and like want to tell us what that's like and what it's about. So yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts, Yeshu? I, I think it's a great way to kind of introduce people to this type of topic. Oh yeah, and for all of our viewers, if you or you know someone who is um, a Desi dancer, uh, who has any kind of knowledge or who may know someone who's a Desi dancer, uh, this is a great opportunity for them to not only tap in with India Current, but also to let the world know about their art and why they choose to do what they do. Um, in this day and age, I feel like there's been so much fusion of taking these like classical art forms and you know, really expanding them. And I know my guru, which means teacher, my dance teacher, um, she was quite known for that the the whole concept of fusion infusion. Fusion infusion, right? Like of taking 
these different elements of Western music or even African beats, which is something that I that my um, Guruji had choreographed too. And then, you know, being able to perform at the Kennedy Center was such an honor for me. Um, and being able to really, you know, expand into these different arenas, performing at the Cherry Blossom Festival. These were all things that we got to do. So it's a real um, mm -hmm. culmination of like different cultures coming into one space. Um, yeah. for, how has your experience been, um, you know, being a Kathak dancer, but on the West Coast? So yeah, there's like a lot of different styles of thought when it comes to classical dancing, which right now we're kind of talking about classical dance, so I'll go into that. I think people think, okay, you know, classical dance comes from ancestry. It comes from this deep background of practice and knowledge. I fully resonate with that because I feel like it really is like when I dance, I'm embodying my ancestors, but not only that, I'm embodying the stories of my ancestors because the stories that we tell, and I was, I, this is something, if you don't know, Kathak is Katha, and a Kathakar mm -hmm. is a dancer. So Katha means story, and a Kathak dancer is a Kathakar, and we're storytellers. That's the point of a Kathak dancer. So you tell stories, and a lot of times, those stories are mythological and grandiose and like all these other things, right? <coughs> these are the stories that, you know, generations of people have been telling and then passing down. And so that is like something that I love about that because understanding where I come from, my identity and why like we, you know, why are even our, as simple as like, why do my parents behave the way that they do? Like, there's a lot of morals and things that you learn from these stories that, you know, you can kind of see reproduced in their behavior. So for me, like, I truly value that part of classical dance. And so I only bring that up to say when we start to fuse things, which is totally fine. Fusing is great. But to understand what that initial thing that you're taking from is, it's so important. And when you look at like Bollywood dance and very like media heavy dance that you see that's Indian or South Asian or Desi, a lot of that ends up being this like weird amalgamation of stuff, not weird, but like just like an amalgamation of all these different things. So going back to our roots and like understanding like why, you know, why did this come to be or like where, where, where is it pulling from referentially? It helps not only understand the new form of the art, but also you then can invest back into like the classical form because I feel like that classical forms are dying. <laughs> and I'm always worried that I don't want it to die because it has so much, you know, it's so much to share and it's so important for us to remember it. Anyway, that Absolutely. was kind of long. <laughs> I feel like, <clears throat> like I'm a classically trained Karnatic singer as well. But I definitely felt that dance was my real connecting piece to my heritage growing up. I started dancing at the age of three. So for me, like my whole life, I've been dancing, right? And so for me, I, I always think like my, my like Telugu skills and like really being able to dive into that. And I see here we have one of my friends, Sri Nivedita, who just popped in here. She herself is a classical South Indian dancer. And then she also, um, you know, is taking in some more folk influences. We'll hopefully be able to talk to her soon. But um, coming back to what I was saying, right, like it was the one connecting piece for me when it came to my heritage. I feel like Growing up, my mom used to tell me, I used to watch these like old, like, you know, the the mythological black and white movies that used to come out, like Bhakta Prahalad and like all of these movies. Mm -hmm. And there would always be these dance sequences, which back in the day, they were a little bit more culturally um, rooted from our classic dance forms. Uh, back then, like choreography used to be more in alignment with, you know, our actual dance, like Kuchipudi and Bhaktivedanta mm -hmm, and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I used to like look at that and I would start dancing too. And that's why my parents put me in class. But it was through that I started to learn the words and, and even mm -hmm. like I used to sing the songs. And so then my mom would be like, oh, wow, like maybe I should put her in music class. So I always felt like dance was my first real exposure to connecting with my culture. And yeah. I think dance had preserved it the best because in our bhangima, which means like poses, in our in our expressions, we're like mm -hmm. telling these stories. There's a song in Kuchipudi. Um, 
which talks, which is a relationship between Yashoda and Krishna. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Krishna is one of our, you know, gods and his baby, when he's a baby, his mother, how she used to take care of him. And my teacher would say, you know, you have to express through your face and everything. And suddenly, it's like, I had to become Yashoda for a minute. And like, this is my baby. It's like just two hands. But like, yeah. you have to literally pretend like this is your baby and you show those expressions. Um, and so that really connected me with the character of Krishna uh, yeah. and like baby Krishna. And that got me really into that history. So I just felt like dance was such a vital piece in my understanding of my culture. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like everything you're saying is, I think the same, even though the st style of dance is different, like, I think that is what these classical forms bring. And and I like don't ever look down upon new new contemporary forms of dance. I this is not I I want to clarify what we're saying is just to give context to like our relationship with the dance that we're doing and how it like can actually feed into like new and contemporary dance because a lot mm -hmm. of what we're seeing now, you know, like Bollywood and a lot of like I was gonna actually say, you know, you initially asked me the question, I forgot to answer. Like, I, my, my Guruji, my Dadaji is a uh, Pandit Chitresh Das, and he actually danced with jazz musicians and jazz dancers, so lots of tap dance. So, Jason Samuel Smith, who's like still like a very well renowned tap dancer, was someone he like toured with, and he would do all these things with specifically like jazz and tap and but also like Afro beats and Latin beats and all these right. things. And that's actually something I really loved about um, him and like our school is that like, it's so much of it is like actually like taking all these other ethnic dances and kind of being like, oh, we all are kind of doing similar things. How can we like resonate with one another and actually kind of communicate that through dance? And I feel like that's the next level of it is like understanding and then evolving and it's both. And um so yeah, like I love that element of like also like storytelling, learning the the cultural element, but then relaying that in all these different ways. That's why I'm saying if anyone's tapping in that's not Daisy, please tell us like what are your ethnic dances because I want to know. I want to know like, you know, how can we all like collaborate or understand one another mm -hmm. and like listen to similar things and all of that. And I think yeah. what's really important that I want to kind of mention here is that dance was also very ritualistic um, and even like historic, like we can pull back into what were rituals that were happening in our, in our households. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, Desi um, like dance forms, like right, the, the classic forms, they'll have like one specific dance, which is like the puja dance. It's the dance that shows, yeah how a puja is done, like, you know, whether it's, like, throwing flowers, Rumland. whether it's doing, yeah. you know, <laughs> doing an auntie, like, and I, I, that was something that I thought was so interesting, and that's also something which is common with, like, other forms of dances, right, mm -hmm. and I used to be so in, like, I, I love dance, I used to, I used to go to these, just a lot, any dance production that would happen, I would go, and I remember when I was in college, there was a troupe of Bolivian dancers, uh, no, not Bolivia. I'm sorry, Chile. They were from Chile, mm -hmm. and they 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 have a very ritualistic dance where they wear their garments and they do it. And when I had spoken to them about it, you know, they had mentioned like, yes, this is part of our tradition, like we do it. But then if you really come back, it comes to that ritualistic thing. This is what we do, yeah, um, in a way to to you know whatever yes. the purpose is. This yeah. is for protection. We do this dance for um, you know. Uh, praying to the gods we do this to do mm -hmm. da, 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 da. so um that was also something that I it's, thought was it's so true I'm just totally like resonating with what you're saying actually it's funny we're talking about this is the first time we've ever talked about this so I feel like we're also like <laughs> vibing but the thing is actually ritualistic in like the themes but also ritualistic in its practice right like yeah. I feel like there's so much ritual in how you even go about dancing like you always pray before you start like you always mm -hmm. have to invoke the gods and like uh and acknowledge your ancestors whether that's like your ancestors of like dance gurus it's usually the dance gurus <laughs> but also like um even the gods, gods. Even the Earth, gods. Right? yeah I was gonna say like yeah. we do like Durga we'll do like a Durga one or we'll do like different like the three deities or whatever like those are like the classic you know 
Um, even the namaskar, right? Like before you start dancing yeah, or before you tie the bell on your on your legs. Mm-hmm. My teacher used to say you always pray to your bells before you tie them on. Oh, uh, yeah. The namaskar that we do where we pray to the ground because we're like, hey, Mother Earth, I'm about to stomp on you. <laughs> you also like pray to your bell. Like I always do like uh, this with my bells before I begin to like, right to like not only bless myself with the bells but to bless the bells and to ensure that I'm like respectful of like the, right the bells themselves and I I think there's so much yeah there's so much ritual so it's like you do you you're like praying to the bells before you put the bells on your feet you're praying to the earth that you're going to like stomp on you're praying to the gods that you hope are invoked through your dance you're praying to your ancestors to do them justice I mean, the ritual before you even begin dancing, that's all before we even really, I mean, all of it is dance if you really want to think about it. But like right. the actual like performance element that people will probably more likely understand that that doesn't start for the first like 30 minutes. <laughs> I feel like it takes like 30 minutes to like just get into it, right? And that is like the ritual of it. And then the ritual also just being that you, you know, people ask me another thing a lot. They'll say, when did you graduate from dance or like when did you like whatever Mm. and I'm like I I will never feel like I'm that experienced and I will always be a lifelong learner because that is the one thing Kathak taught me is that no matter how hard I try no matter how much I try to put in my brain I will never know everything and I will never know enough right like it just I just feel like I every time I go to class I learn something new and I'm like oh there's this too and then there's this too and then there's this thal and there's this other thal and then I'm trying to like lay this other, you know, there's always so much to learn. So I've never thought like, Hey, I'm done. That's why mm-hmm. it's continuous learning, like for the rest of your life. And I don't know if you feel that way, but that's why it's still. Absolutely. Dance. I don't yeah. think that there is like, <clears throat> I don't think that with dance, singing, some, all of these arts, like painting, whatever, right. And art doesn't have an end. Um, and I feel the same way with dance, like, okay, so you've learned these. And then I know a lot of people do their Ranga Pravesham, which is like their, the solo debut. And then they think that your solo debut is your graduation. Um, in fact, my dad, he said he, he, he didn't let me do my Ranga Pravesham here in the U S. So instead what we did was, um, in a small Indian temple in our village, I gave a solo debut performance. Um, and then we turned it into just like, and then we fed the local community and like oh, we just wow. turned it into like an event and he's you know because because he never felt like here especially kind of you know people make it into like kind of like a program like oh you do your younger probation and then you can either stay with the program or you can grab you know you can leave but like that's the end and so my dad he did not like that about it so he and said you don't have like to. now it's like monetary right like right you're going and it's to like now, oh, like, you got the package it, it was like a package my yeah, like literally yeah. he was like Okay, Yashu has finished learning those four dances and then these six. She's, you know, she's done her, th- it was like a PhD program. No, she's like gone to three take conferences. Time, you have to like take tests and stuff, right? Luckily, um, my Kata teachers didn't have, or at least when I was, now I think they do, but back then I was learning at a point where they hadn't really monetized it correctly or, no, I don't know what's correct. But this is why I think this live is so important because we're having to monetize and like, take away from what actual like these classical dance forms would be without that right but we just don't have enough people investing money in them so that's why like you have mm-hmm. that kind of a Maybe thing it's important that we as dancers continue that and i i have thought about this many a times to go back to dance um i unfortunately had an accident couldn't dance anymore um and so for me like that was a really difficult part because dance was such a big part of my life Mm -hmm. um and I had been dedicating like you said like other than my school like my whole other life was dance so that was definitely I actually got depressed after that 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 definitely influenced my mental health like it was definitely a hard time for me but I thought to myself like I want to get back into it but um and I think that if I go back now I'm it's like it's going to be again like I'm going to see new things that that like maybe 17 year old Yashu never saw, mm-hmm. you know, like, and I think that, like you said, like it's an ever, ever, you're always going to be learning. You're always going to be bettering your craft. And, and I think this is where that fusion component in this concept of choreography is such a valuable thing because it's like infinite. 
we can come up with so many concepts. It's you're never going to you run out of dances, you know? Um, and I think that that's also the beauty of these art forms that, and that's where the, the fusion and all of these things play such an important role because they allow us to keep our art alive, even past a curriculum that mm -hmm. these monetary systems have maybe confined or boxed our art to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. I definitely feel like, Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 finish your thought. <laughs> so I definitely feel like with our, uh, with dance especially, that's that's a, a level of freedom that that you have. But with that being said, I kind of want to like you know throw in some other concepts, especially because we got all these amazing viewers tapping in with us. If you are a dancer, go ahead and type in what kind of dancer you are. Uh, we would love to hear from you about your dance, but. I kind of want to take a minute to talk about costume, jewelry, makeup, and all of those little components mm, because that's a really huge part of dance, uh, especially like South, excuse me, especially Desi dance. Uh, so I'm going to let you start. Like, I want to know, because I don't actually know about the Kathak uniform. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about like what Kathak dancers wear and like, is there anything significant, you know? kind of give well, us a little so it's interesting that you bring this up because it's something that I'm also trying to understand because as a non-binary dancer which is something that like I've started to really push a little bit more than I used to um I haven't really felt comfortable in the traditional sometimes not traditional but like the interesting thing is like when you play a character you'll wear like the guy thing or you'll yeah. you'll wear the girl thing or whatever but traditional, so when you're practicing, you're just wearing a kurta and um, like, you know, churidars, which is like men and women wear kurtas and churidars. So to me, the, I literally wear my, my brother's old ones. I'll wear my, my ones that my mom got me. It literally doesn't matter. I'll wear anything. So in class, I feel very comfortable because I'm never having to be performing in that way. And I love like playing all the different characters. That's fine. But then when it comes to actual performance, I've always... I've always ended up wearing like a very feminine outfit, which is not a problem, but when it's always that, and I actually don't really feel comfortable in like a lot of makeup and you know, you were saying like, that is like a, an element of all dance. I don't think just art dance, but it's like, you know, theater. Like, in theater, yeah, you're putting on a lot of eyeliner, a lot of like, like eyeshadow and lipstick and it's all red and it's like this and that and that's fine if I felt really comfortable in like the outfit but then the outfit's like very feels to me like you're wearing jewelry too and I'm wearing rings and I'm wearing bangles and I'm wearing earrings and I'm wearing a mangbika and I'm wearing you know something on the side and I'm I have my hair up with a long like sometimes you know you do the uh, the brandy with like the flowers or you'll put the flowers in your hair so there's a lot of getting ready a brandy is actually just like the original hair extension um if, for people who don't know it's like a braid like a long like just black string that you can like braid into your hair it doesn't really look like hair though um yes i i am they she so you could say she but i prefer they um, someone asked me on the chat what my preferred pronouns were. So, yeah, like, so now as I've started kind of confronting, started kind of confronting being non-binary in a gut tuck space, which traditionally is like either you're male or you're female. And, um, I think men a lot of times play women, but like, I don't know. I just, I'm just trying to figure it out. That's what I'm trying to say to you is like, I'm trying to figure out how to feel most comfortable in dance because I do see this crossover and that is something super important to me. That's why I love that because I like that. I think it's hard because um, our dance forms are very masculine, feminine roles, right? Yeah. It's like, it's because we're telling these stories and for example, Ram is a male and Sita is a female. Like we have these very distinct roles. Yeah, and so exactly. it's not even about the dancer and how they identify. It's more like what role they fit in. Now there's of course other dances, which is like, like a Tilana, which is not, which is a rhythmic yeah. dance. Yeah. And that's not, you know, you're not, you're not embodying any form or any character. 
Now, but for Tilana, that would be a space that I think would be beautiful for you to explore, you know, costume. Yeah. And like but the creating your identity. When you dance, unless you're dancing a solo, you're dancing with like a few people, right? And it's like, yeah. oh, everyone's going to wear this thing. So then it becomes <laughs> a whole thing to be like, I don't want to wear this. I think this mm -hmm. is me telling you that I'm in the process of trying to understand. I love it. I know my right? Guruji for, for um, my Guruji is known for a production called Navarasa. Um, and so she's done this production all over the world. Um, and we're m best known for this production at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. Mm. And so in this one, she had these like custom outfits and they change colors depending on the, the, the type of expression that we're going for. Navarasa is the nine expressions. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the, these were custom made and they're just plain white. They go on men and women, plain white with gold. They go on men, women, like they're very neutral, very like gender neutral. Yeah. Um, and so I thought that that was like very innovative. And I love how they change colors. Like when they're in like the love, like emotion, then it changes to red. Like the, the bottom That's part is yeah. to red. Um, when they're doing some greed, like or jealousy or whatever, right? Like it, it changes to green. So I just thought it was very innovative and, you know, just spitting it out there. Like I would love for you to kind of like maybe look into something like that where you feel that as a troop, like this was for the whole troop. Everyone is wearing this and everyone is like very plain, but and then the main characters are getting this like splash of color yeah. or whatever. You know? So it's, but, it's also like what you say, you're playing a story. I, I, I fully think that's so beautiful. I think it depends on the story too, right? Like depending on like what kind of thing you're trying to talk about, like. Hello? Am I still yeah, here? Hey. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did I pause? <laughs> okay, sorry. What I was saying was like, you know, a lot of times you're doing Radha and Krishna or, you know, Ram and mm -hmm. Sita or you're playing a character. So in those characters, you might embody male or female. And I want to focus on this a little bit, moving away from the um, actual outfit, because I actually, that's like such a small part of that. I think that is like a big thing to me sometimes, but also just the, the concept of Arthanari Sora, which is like that, you know, we embody mm. male and female and we're masculine and feminine. That is mm. like the most non-binary thing you could do. So like that is also a real reason why I've always loved Kathak is like that. I can kind of perform in the way that I want to because I like playing masculine. I feel like a lot of masculine energy comes out of me and I feel like mischievous and I feel very like, you know, like that's my energy is very ma mischievous, which usually is attributed to masculine, like more male and like Krishna energy. But you know, I don't like playing Radha. I don't want to be demure. I don't want to be like this. <laughs> I'm not like that. You know, that's that's literally her stance. They're they're always like go like this, go like this. But I'm like, I want to be like, I want to be like this because <laughs> that's how I right. feel. You know, so. I you do have to play a character, but sometimes they, if the character feels too like box boxing you into like who you you know I don't know I just feel very like stressed and I love that you mentioned this yeah. and this is no shade at all to any of my past co colleagues or, or 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 gurujis I completely respect them um being the plus size woman that I was mm -hmm. I would always get placed as Ravana that's yeah Ravana I would always be Kamsa I would always be the villain the villain, the male de demon villain. That's actually how I tore my uh, ligaments and oh. my knees through dance because um, I would have to fall because I would die. Obviously, I'm the whip villain. And like the, the falls would be very dramatic. So I would just crash my knees onto the ground. That would be, that's my like, you know, boom. And so I did it so many times, so much repetition that I ended up damaging my knees. Oh. But I just remember like, I used to be like, I want to be Radha. Like I want to, like I would be, cause I'm, I, I, I would, I'm a very sensual space person. I wanted to always explore that. And I wanted to really be those very delicate roles. Um, but I would never be given them. I would always that's be come so, That's mm. so funny. Mm. I would <laughs> love to play Robert. That's all I've ever wanted to do is play yeah. like the evil antagonistic character. <laughs> That is me. Like, let me go. <laughs> right. But then, and then on my like, side, I'm like, oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what that means. This is what 
a gender, you know, like gender spectrum, like letting people be who they are. That's like a real thing. Like, I don't want to play the demure Radha and you, and not that that's, that's a problem. That's fine. Someone else should totally play that character. I just don't want to play that character. And, and I think like, every character is equally important. Like, let, let we just want to put that out there, right? Like, we're not talking about the history. The history can say there's a villain, there's yeah. a hero, there's a hero, whatever. But, like, when it comes to the dance form, every character plays a part. Every character is important. Um, someone had someone had said, is, is Kuchipuri theater or is it dance? Mm. They had asked me this question. Oh, that's a good and question. And I said, it's a good question, right? Yeah. And I said to them, it is both. Like, there's a theater component to it because we are telling stories. There is a... You have a big introduction, you have a plot twist, you like you have it all. It is a full blown storytelling, right? And the origins is harikata, like you said, it's the telling of a story. Mm -hmm. um, but the dance component comes in with technique. Between expression, right? Like you have this part which is like, oh baby Krishna, you're so cute. Oh baby Krishna, you're so cute. And then three count beats, four count beats, seven count beats. And then Krishna climbed a tree. Krishna climbed a tree, Krishna climbed a tree, three count, four count, seven count, some sort of foot technique, footwork, whatever. So if you really broke it down pragmatically, it's a combination to me of like theater and, mm. um, but this is Kuchipuri specific and Kuchipuri is actually known for this. The difference mm. a lot of times between Bharatanatyam and Kuchipuri and a lot of people don't know this is that Kuchipuri is like maybe just a little bit more emphasis on the footwork and the crispness of like the the more like the the technique when it comes to the dance not as much of the story like just by a little smaller percentage but the narrative is a little bit more flowy as compared uh, between Kuchipuri and Bhartanatyam. And I, and I know this because my Guruji, she is a both Bhartanatyam teacher and a Kuchipuri teacher. And so mm. this is how she, what she would tell us um, was the major difference between mm. both of the dance forms. Like, and so that's kind of how I came to my conclusion. Now, I don't know anything about Katak. Mm. So for you, do you feel like Katak is more theatrical or is it more footwork or combination or how do you feel about it? Um, it depends on, well, you know, that's a really difficult question. I think that's kind of a hard question to ask, answer even for any type of dance because any dance is telling a story. Whether that's like mm -hmm. a long story or a short story, there's something that they're trying to convey through the dance. I mean, in our things, it's usually something like mythological or like some some narrative. Like, I mean, my um, the the artistic director at our school has been doing some really innovative stuff. So like when these fires were happening in California and the environmental crisis. She did this full production last year online slash like they filmed it in person called Agni. Agni mm. means fire in, in Hindi. But Agni was, if you watched um, and you didn't necessarily know that, it, it's very technical. They're not saying mm. anything. They're actually not even really doing anything. But the actions speak to be like they're embodying the flame. They mm. are the flames that are whipping around. And some people are the wind and they're whipping around. And it's like mm. you're seeing like the interaction of like elements. So I don't know. Mm. Like ev I think everything right. is a story. Now and, let's like, talk about like because and the reason I'm bringing this up is because like for example we see like Bhangra. Right, we see Bhangra, and of course, like that's um that's a very folk. I think it, it I think it is classified as a folk dance. I don't think yeah. it's known as a classical folk, dance no, form. Folk dance, yeah, yeah. yeah. Folk dance. Um, and I I know there's a lot of media media um representation of like Bhangra. Like we see like a lot of movies showing Bhangra. We hear you know, and, and people very often associate like oh Indian dance, like you mm -hmm. know, like when you guys like jump on your feet and stuff, and then. Um, and, and so I always used to be like, oh, I'm not that kind of dancer. Like I'm a whole different kind of dancer. Mm -hmm. Um, and so for me, I think a lot of people would associate Bhangra and stuff like that as like a more foot technique, hand technique, not, you know, they would see that more as like a mm -hmm. dance technique. And then they would see like classical dance as the theater. Mm -hmm. I think that's where like that separation. That's was a good point. And I want to 
comment that you were so right that it's a, I think all classical dance is super super technically driven like so technical mm -hmm. that you wouldn't even know how technical it is unless you're doing it which is why we're talking about it because I think like thinking about even just like you know you're saying like I'm baby Krishna I'm doing this I'm doing this for four counts right but even doing that for four counts, you have to understand what Tintal is if you're dancing in Tintal, which, you know, people dance in all the different, like Rupak, Dadra, Kherwa, like, if you were going to talk about Tal, it's like a million Tals. But the classic standard Thal is means, Tintal. Tintal means beat, just beat. for those people Sorry, don't. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I should have said that. So Tintal is the, the standard beat that most people will dance and sing to. So you're singing, you're dancing to a 16-beat uh, cycle. So that's, and it's broken up into fours. So in case you're wondering, it'll go ta din din ta, ta din din ta, na din din ta, ta din 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 na, that's four. Four, four, uh, four sections of four, it, it equals 16 beats. And then when you're doing, I'm sure this is true for Kuchipuri too, because I know it's true for Parthnatyam, is that there's some type of satkar. So, yes. um, Satkar would be like, in Kathak it's different, I know Bharatanatyam is different, I'm pretty sure Kuchipuri is probably different. So each one has a set of footwork. So it's, and it's not extra footwork, it's like the basic lowest level of footwork that you need to know to, to understand the beat. So, um, I don't know if people want to know this, <laughs> so I don't know how detailed I need to go, but once you know it's yourself, very techy. That's what we're trying to get at. I think what we're trying to get at is like it's very technical. technical. Yeah. So like, not, we're telling these stories, but like if you look at the feet, the feet are doing their thing. Like it's yeah. very technical. You have it's, to hit the right very beat. Tap dancey in with our feet because you're you're yeah. keeping track of the the beat, the cycles, and then you're having to every like first when you start at one again is called sum. So you have to keep track of when sum comes because you want you that's basically the start of a new cycle and you're starting a new thing usually so not only that and then it's like the the footwork gets really crazy and technical because depending on if you're going slow or fast or if you're doing um whatever like you have to do math to count how how long it'll take you to do a certain amount of footwork to end on a certain beat and then start something so and a lot of times people are doing this with live musicians. So you have a real tabla player playing and you're trying to like mm -hmm. improvise or you're trying to like make sure that you and them are in sync and that you're like starting on the right beats and doing the right thing. Absolutely. And I yeah. think, um, and, and, you know, like I said, both Srishti and I, and I would say probably more so Srishti than I, um, because I no longer dance, but if anyone is interested to find out more, whether it's about Katak or it's about Kuchipuri or any dance form, uh, especially this month, we're going to be bringing on amazing, amazing people, not only from the classical form, but also to give you guys a little glimpse of how folk dance is also important, you know, whether that's Bhangra or just like a kutu form, whatever it is, right? We definitely want to educate all of our viewers on these beautiful dance art forms which originate in these Desi communities. And we would love, love it for our audience to tap in with us. Um, if you I know, know there's somebody, some... definitely send them our way because we want to interview as many different types of people as we can find. Um, I know there's some very rare dance forms too. Um, I know Sri Lanka has its own very specific dance form um, that very finite number of people do, and their costume is very different. Mm -hmm. um, I know, for example, Nepali dance uh, is very different. Even in in like South India, right? Like in Kerala, we have like Katakali, but we also have Mohiniyattam, and not a lot of people do Mohiniyattam. And my dream which I speak into existence, maybe 2022, <laughs> I would <laughs> like to, to, yeah, to try to find a Mohini Atam instructor, maybe virtually, because maybe they're not here in Houston, but to definitely get myself more acquainted, because that's, that's an art form that I've always wanted to learn. Um, but, you know, tapping in with, with your community to see what are the different things that are going on, um, I think would be great. With yeah. that being I wanted to just... Throw in one last little fun fact about Kuchipuri, and maybe you can throw in a fun fact about Katak. Um, and I don't know if this is something that happens in Katak too, but in Kuchipuri, as you elevate in your levels of dance, it's just kind of talking about technique. We have three major like dances that kind of happen towards the the prime of your career. One is once you've 
um, you finish like a certain amount of curriculum and you're known as a worthy dancer, you do a very specific dance um, that talks about Satya Bama, um, who is one of Krishna's wives. And for this piece, your instructor will, it's either hand it down to you because now you're like, pro, pro, I say this word wrong all the time, protogeny, pro, protogeny, I mean that. Like a, you know, you're like now I'm passing this down to you. What do you, what do you call yeah. that person? That Protégé? word. Pro that, that. <laughs> I always say it wrong. <laughs> um, and so they'll give a gold, golden hair piece. So it's like fake. It's like a whole entire gold thing that should go from the top all the way to the bottom. And when your instructor has given you that pupil, great, that works too. <laughs> um, but when when your instructor gives you that, that's like a credential. That's like You've made me proud, you know, and so that's a significant. We also have the uh, putting a pot of water on your head and dancing. Oh, wow. Which is, like a real pot of water. Because we yeah. all do the fake pot of water. <laughs> that's a real one. And this is part of your test, kind of like, mm. this is how you build your credentials. And then the third one is dancing on a plate. And so you have a plate that has these sharp edges where you, your, your, your thumb is on the inside and the rest of your fingers are on the outside of it. So you're holding the plate with your thumb and you perform the the entire dance. But the important part is you have to hit every count with this plate. So it's what? like, yeah, like, kitata, like, for example, if you're doing like, tari kitata, right, then it's like, do, 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 do. like your chain, you have to move the plate like that, like, do, 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 do. So it's like you do the whole like, tari kitatom, tari kitatom, tari kitatom, do, 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 do. you like, you move the plate. What and the? Then, Oh, yeah, wow. and once you get in the plate, this is your plate. Have you been and then the uh, no, okay. I didn't. I was like that was, um, I was like maybe three or four dances away to like getting to the level of the plate. The okay. Satya Bama is, I think, the very last. It's uh one of the very last. So and then the last the one where you're holding the pot, or which one is that? It's one? the hair when oh, you're given the, the golden hair. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then one last thing, which is super important, is there's always a little paddle and a stick that's used that the teachers beat on. It's a wooden block with a wooden stick and you learn like, like you learn how to do it. And there's a technique to it. It's percussion. Like there's a technique to doing it. But when your guru gives you that saying mm -hmm. like you are now able to teach. So these are kind of like different, like just, I, I was always just like, my guruji was my God. <laughs> So for me, like, I would always just be like, one day, I want to be able to do this, you know? Mm -hmm. So just some fun facts, uh, Kuchipuri outfits, the the difference between Bhartanatyam and Kuchipuri is there's like a little flap that's on the side, but the outfit is almost the same. The, the flap is the only difference between oh. a Kuchipuri and a Bhartanatyam attire. Good to know. So that's yeah. just like a fun fact. Now your turn. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's, I don't know, like he, the solo performing a solo, like all the elements of a solo, which is actually like requires an incredible amount of stamina. That's like the main one. And then I think like there are older traditions where like, which um, my teacher did with, uh, with Dadaji, which is like the, the bind, like binding of a knot. So like you, you have a guru shisha relationship uh, which is mm -hmm. shisha is a student but like you have a special bond with your guru like and that only happens if you're like the top of the top of the top that's not so much a thing anymore um but it's funny because like I have been learning I think your relationship with dance also changes over time right and my like you know when you're initially you're like oh I need to be like you were saying like I wanted to get this and I want to get that and I want to get this and I want to get that and then you're older and you're like okay like I'm also fine with just like loving dance and doing right. dance forever and I think that's what happened to me like I have my plate yeah. I, I was just remembering like I have my plate it's in oh. the attic <laughs> oh but you, it's like, you didn't do the thing. You didn't actually end up doing it. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But yeah, like I think it's like your relationship with dance definitely changes. And Kathak is very different than Kuchipuri, actually. Like we're, Kathak is very flowy. It's very, mm -hmm. um, it is very like still foot heavy, but not with like the stances. It's like mm -hmm. more like 
I don't know. It's just different. And then a lot of spins, which is very specific to Kathak is like you doing, mm. like, I think like if you're a really amazing dancer, you'll, you'll do what we call chakras, which is the spins. You can do like a spin every second or, or half a spin every, you know, every, like you can do two spins every second, or you can do three spins every second. It's so like amazing dancers can do crazy amount of spins and have amazing footwork where they're hitting every beat with their feet, which is what you're saying with your hands. But I know you're doing it with your feet too. I'm just saying like for us, right. it's like a lot really foot heavy, like really, really foot mm. heavy and less like other stuff and then spins. It's like mm. feet and spins and yeah. Right. Like that's like the, like a lot of times you'll, your like position will maybe just be like this, but your feet will be going like 500, you know, <laughs> beats <laughs> 500, per minute. 500 beats per minute. Like it'll be really fast. Yeah. Honestly, mm. it can be that fast. So, it's just like yeah, different technique, different style. Definitely the solo I think is pretty, hmm. pretty standard. Like if you can do a solo, and the, you know I'm sure every element of the solo, like you're saying, like doing the specific thing gets you to that point. It's like that. I think it's the same. But yeah, it's funny because even within, I think it's a good way to wrap up. Is like even within south asian cultures the classical dances are extremely different and they're technically driven and they're like you wouldn't even know it if you well you would know it if you watched the difference between ours but maybe between kuchipudi and Bharatanatyam, it would not be so obvious so um, and i, I and I, mm -hmm. that was and i will say right like the, and there's so many dances everyone like we are just talking about kathak and kuchipudi because that's what we come from but there's so many and i think there was actually a movie that was that um, happened in 1985, and this movie was actually um, sponsored sponsored by like the French arts, and I, I, I could be like I don't know which group, but it was definitely like a French art company. The director or like some the production team is a French company, but they were talking about Katakali, which is a Kerala dance form. And in that one, it's all about the subtle movements. You don't move your body. You stand like like you stand like this for 30 minutes and the whole dance is your eye movement. That's so the whole dance that's is like, hard. <laughs> yeah. Like that's the whole dance and the movie. I wasn't a big hot fan of like the storyline. I was like, what's going on here? But Mohanlal and Shobhana who are two amazing, you know, art artists. Shobhana is actually a dancer. Um, they did a great job. And the movie's purpose was really to show the how how someone like embodied themselves in their dance. I had never seen Katakali. And so actually Mohanlal got trained like for this movie for with like Katakali dancers. And it, it the art form, like it was the first time I saw their makeup when you see it's that one that makes you look like a scary monster. It's like green with this like red White. makeup oh, right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they show how it's made, how it's painted on. Like the movie is very artsy. It was like almost. It was like a very artsy film. That's um, so true. Even like what is it? Know, I think you would enjoy Odyssey. that. Yeah, I think there's a similar one with Odyssey. Odyssey is like also like they do blue face. I think like fully mm -hmm. blue with like maybe white eye, like white eyes like this. I'm trying to remember. But yeah, you're totally right. I think actually you and I do the the less like dramatic makeup and the less dramatic everything, but like. There are some classical dance forms where it's like pretty, like pretty cool and pretty crazy, like what they end up doing with their whole body and outfit. I think we're reaching the end of our um, live. At yes, this and that movie is called Vana Prastam, and it was, oh. it's called Vana Prastam, The Last Dance, and it was a, it was a Indo-French psychological, psychological drama. Um, but Sushi, I want you to watch that movie. I think send you're really going to love it. Send text it to me so I can watch it. Mm -hmm. Definitely sounds it, it very was interesting. Written it was written and produced by Pierre Asouline. So it's a completely, it's a French movie, but like using Mohanlal and Suhasini, not Shobhana, I'm sorry, Suhasini. There's another movie that has Shobhana and Mohanlal in it about dance, but this particular one, it won um, like American Film Institute. It won a prize. It won special prizes from Istanbul International Film Festival. Like it won a lot of awards. So <laughs> Amazing. All right. Yeah, definitely send it to me. I will watch it. Okay, so yeah, let's close out. If you have any questions about classical and cultural dance, definitely put them in the chat. If you know anybody that does them, definitely hit us up because we want to interview them. If you are one of them, we want to interview you. 
Um, and I think that was the best summary we could have given about our uh, relationships. And next week we'll actually have a, my, my, um, school. So like my Catholic schools, people come and talk to us a little bit about, um, that form. The week after we'll have a Paratinatium dancer come and talk. And the week after we'll have something special planned. So, uh, keep, hold your horses and just keep watching and hopefully <laughs> you'll stay to watch the rest of the stuff. So thank you, Yeshu. This was awesome. Thank you. I think your, your stuff was really cool. I didn't even know that about Pitchy Bree. <laughs> there, listen there. And there's so much about cut. Like I'm about to like literally Google like YouTube got the like, cause I'm, and I love all these like Instagram influencers who've been posting little snippets of their dances. Cause I feel like, in this day and age, it's a great way to get exposure. And I'm, I'm learning a lot about, like, technique and yeah. stuff because I'm, you know. If you're but... going to look it up, look up Chitresh Das. His feet, his footwork, and his spins are insane. Like, you just have to look at that. That's what you should look at. And then look at all the other stuff because it'll be good. But Chitren, who was it? Chitren Das? Chitresh, like C-H-I-T-R-E-S-H. -E and then Das, D-A-S. And I'm going to look up your thing, too. Mana Prastam. All right. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. And um, it's been nice seeing you. <laughs> Bye. See you next Bye. week. Oh, she's so beautiful. Oh, <laughs> she's still watching. <laughs> yeah. And I think we should definitely talk about in the future. Sorry. I know we're, we're supposed to get offline, but I had to just say this. Mm -hmm. In the movie, and you'll see this in Mana Prastam, um, they talk about how the men play these feminine characters and to like embody these very like kind of just coming back about the gender identities and everything. I just feel, um, you know, like that was a big topic that they touch on the movies. Like how do you show like a feminine shyness because he played the role of like Arada and there was someone else who played another role. And the movie ends with this controversy because he has his own daughter playing the role of, either Radha oh, or Sita and he's wrong. Yeah, and like he's her father, but then she's yeah. playing this very but it's a role. intimate character. Right. And then the movie be like that's like the ending controversy. I don't want to give it away, but like it's no, like it is, it is questionable. It is weird. But mm -hmm. okay, I will watch. All right. We gotta get off. They're gonna kick us off. <laughs> All right, bye guys. Peace.